What's up, everybody? This is Fred, and you're on another episode of For the Love of Rides. And we're going to talk today about the big event that happened this past Monday, January 14th, 2019, which was, of course, the highly anticipated unveiling, the reveal of the 2024 Mustang GT500, which will be available this coming fall. So we're going to talk about what we learned, what we already knew, and what we feel about it. So we'll get right into it. Now, when it comes to the actual reveal, uh, it was pretty cool what they did. They implemented VR into it. Uh, people in up towards the front got VR. So it's kind of a virtual reality thing going on there. Uh, but what they did is they had uh, two of the executives. Uh, they were they were basically sitting on couches on the screen like they were getting ready to play a video game with each other online so they're selecting their cars and they actually had actual a 67 a 68 and a 69 gt500 uh drive across the stage as they were selecting their cars so they really went with that video game concept and thing um and of course after the three the 67 the 68 gt500 king of the road and the 69 uh they went across the stage and they was like oh we have a new mystery gt500 let's unlock it and see what it can do and so they go into selecting the car and then it's just like you would be playing a video game. I think this probably was modeled after like the video game Forza. It looks like they had Xbox controllers in their hand. Uh, but so the, the car is selected. They, uh, the, it starts off like, you know, kind of like you would expect if you're playing a, a racing video game. The car takes off. It's driving through the city of the town. Uh, not sure exactly where this is supposed to be you know just my assumption is that it should be detroit somewhere driving through detroit but uh who knows um maybe if anybody from detroit is looking and is familiar with that if it actually is something that looks familiar to detroit but it really just looks like one of a, a, a racetrack that was put together and rendered for a video game but as the car is driving it eventually gets to the end of I guess but at the end of it it says level complete so it gets to that end and then a helicopter actually drops down and picks the car up so once the helicopter uh, drops in and picks the car up flies away with the car it flies and then it actually just starts to land like it's about to let the car down and when it lets the car down the actual real-life car uh, was stored in the rafters the whole time and car is let down from the rafters in front of the uh, the audience who is viewing this press conference so um, and then he gets up and then he starts talking about the car so that was pretty interesting how they did that uh, kind of creative uh, I liked it all new Shelby GT500 I once asked Carol what was his favorite Shelby the Cobras, the GT40, which one? He said, the next one. Well, Carol, you'd love this next one. It's the same Ford Performance team that won Le Mans. They poured the heart and soul into this GT500. They gave it. So the first thing I want to focus on is the looks and the styling of the vehicle. Um, it's a beautiful automobile. They did an excellent job. They knocked it out of the park. I mean, it's mean looking. It's tough, aggressive. Uh, but at the same time, it's like a sleek silkiness to it. I mean, almost velvety but so this somehow it still maintains no, that that brutish muscle car look at the same time uh you know if that makes any sense if, you probably know what i'm talking about That's as much but at the same time i mean it's just really a beautiful car um i like it i give it an a plus uh but of course i'm a mustang guy so maybe i'm biased but uh, I definitely, just based on looks alone, uh, I have no disappointment in how the car looks uh, and the design and the style and uh, aesthetically. Uh, you know, other thing that I might be, other things that I might be disappointed about. But you know, we'll talk about that later. So it's time to embarrass some supercars 
at a Ford price. One more thing I want to note uh, concerning the looks and the design also is if you take a look back at a year or two into the S197s, you could see the S550 coming because there was a concept Mustang that was designed by an Italian guy by the name of Giorgetto Giugiaro. Uh, if some of you may remember this um, concept Mustang, it had a very European Italian look to it. And as you look forward to when the S550 came out, uh, you see that styling really got implemented into the uh, new generation of Mustang with the S550. It was actually, when you look at the pictures of that concept Mustang, you see um, the, of course, the S197 in there, but then you saw how the car was moving forward. Now, looking back at it and knowing what the S550 looks like, you see how uh, the S550 was inspired or how the S550 evolved uh, from that concept. All right, now we're going to talk about some of the numbers, the figures here on this car, or the ballpark figures and estimates that they are giving us. Um, and keep in mind, this car is still going to be, it's still pretty much in development. It's been revealed so we know what it looks like, but you know, they aren't giving any hard numbers like fuel economy or anything like that. Although if you can afford this car, you're not too concerned about fuel economy. Uh, but as far as horsepower, uh, zero to 60 quarter mile times. We only have estimates. We don't have definites because they are going to be working on this car, developing it, uh, trying to get it as fast and powerful as they can to, by making tweaks on it between now up until when they do actually go on sale and you can actually buy one this coming fall. So, you know, we're looking at what, seven, eight, nine months um, before the first ones will be uh, delivered actually but uh, so of course so far we know uh, of course it is a 5.2 liter v8 it's the same 5.2 liter from the gt350 and the gt350r uh, but it has a cross plane crank instead of the flat plane crank that was in the gt350 so it will have that more traditional uh sound engine sound 
uh, as opposed to the flat plane crank and the GT350, it had a uh, more, I guess you'd say, European supercar type sound to it. Um, cross plane crank means that it is going to uh, is going to rev lower. Flat plane crank, like a European supercar, is going to rev higher, uh, but the flat plane crank and the 5.2 and the GT350, it is gonna have less torque. So this 5.2 supercharge with the cross plane crank will naturally, it'll rev lower, but it will get uh, more torque. Uh, this uh, engine is going to put out uh, over 700 horsepower. Uh, we don't have weight figures. Um, we don't have torque. Uh, one of the uh, YouTubers that I watched that was there said that he was told by one of the execs, I believe it was the engineering guy, that it is going to be more than 3,800 pounds. So it's going to be heavier than 3,800. Uh, but you can imagine with a uh, DCT transmission, which we'll talk about that later, uh, dual clutch automatic, and a uh, supercharger. This Eaton supercharger is also the same one used in the Corvette ZR1. It's a 2.7 liter uh, supercharger made right here in the United States down in Athens, Georgia. If you remember, this is not the first time Eaton superchargers have been used on Mustang Cobras. The Terminators from 03 and 04 also had Eaton superchargers. And it's going to have a zero to 60 time acceleration in the mid three second range. Um, quarter mile time is gonna be less than 11 seconds. And this is all from a stock out of the box turnkey car that you buy from the manufacturer with a warranty. So this is crazy because this type of, these type of horsepower numbers and all that Usually, you know, in the past, you can only get this from a car that was that was done up after market. Uh, but we have this coming straight from the manufacturer now in this day and time. Uh, some of the features that you will see it, of course, S550 Mustang. So it has uh, independent rear suspension. Uh, it also has the active Magna ride suspension. Um, it's going to have a big hood scoop that heat for heat extraction um, I, don't, I don't know I guess you could consider that a scoop it's just really like an opening but I, I always thought a scoop was what actually comes up and protrudes over the top of the hood but they call it a hood scoop um, with that hood scoop or opening there is a removable rain tray uh, it has hood pins which they call them self-locating I'm not even really sure what that means. Uh, the track pack, uh, which is shown, you know, the one that was actually dropped down from the rafters. That one's going to have 20-inch um, exposed carbon fiber wheels. Uh, I'm not even really into carbon fiber, uh, but all the carbon fiber with this car uh, looks really good. So I wouldn't mind the carbon fiber on this car. Uh, oh, in this track pack, um, the spec speculation is going to be around a $10,000 option. Um, along with the 20-inch exposed carbon fiber wheels, they're going to be wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Uh, 305s in the front, 315s in the rear. Uh, we got six-piston, 420-millimeter brakes in the front, which that's what, 15.5, 16.5? Um, uh, 16 and a half inch rotors or whatever. Uh, the brakes are humongous. As a matter of fact, I think they are the uh, largest uh, brakes on a on a production uh, car and well, production American car. Uh, it has um, three seventy millimeter brakes in the rear. Uh, there's the carbon fiber wing that you can see. 
which provides the most downforce downforce ever on a Mustang. Uh, there's that carbon fiber interior trim. The carbon fiber trim may actually be available on the lower trim level or the uh, non-track pack, but I forget really. It may it may be exclusive, uh, but either way, it's not bad looking. You know, you know, not really traditional carbon fiber. Uh, the rear seat delete, of course, comes with the uh, track pack now the nine track pack model that one will have 20 inch rims as well they are not carbon fiber uh the tires are michelin pilot sport 4s's uh it has a rear wing but it's not as large so it's really more just like a spoiler uh the front splitter is less aggressive than the one you see on the track pack uh the 12 inch gauge display i think that's going to be on both but then again that might be on just the track pack also uh but that's pretty much what you get uh when you are buying 70 80. these are just my speculations as far as the numbers on the car the big thing that they're touting about this car is the aero technology it has uh so much um uh, design associated with whether it be the arrow and the downforce with the rear wing and the front splitter um, and then going all the way to the uh, the places in the front end where it brings in air to cool either the brakes or the engine bay if you look at the sections of the front end right in front of the wheels you'll see those huge openings for air to come in and cool the car. Uh, so, you know, a car that's pumping out 700 horsepower again has to be cooled efficiently. Looking at these videos of the car just riding, cruising around, uh, man, again, it looks so good. Um, you hear the exhaust note is really pronounced and really loud. But what I really had to tune my ear and listen for, you can hear it if you really listen, um, but it isn't as loud as you're used to. But the sound of the supercharger, the whine of a supercharger, because if you got a car that has a supercharger, you want to hear that supercharger whine. Uh, but listen for that. Some of the sounds or the exhaust clips in these videos, you can hear it. Um, but you really have to listen for it because the exhaust note, which of course is a beautiful symphony, it kind of almost drowns out the supercharger whine. And of course, you know, you really, of course you want to hear both, but you really have to listen for the supercharger whine. Now this part I was saving for last uh, because this is where I really want to give my mindset and my thoughts how I feel. Uh, and that is, of course, when it comes to the transmission. Uh, the transmission is a seven speed DCT or dual clutch transmission. It's made by Tremec uh, and it is uh, said that it will shift in less than 100 milliseconds and that's pretty fast uh, and the thing about this automatic transmission is 
there is, as we know right now, they haven't announced, there is not going to be a manual. And I'm really struggling with that. I'm, I'm really so conflicted because I'm a manual guy. Uh, I'm a purist when it comes to driving or performance driving. Uh, the purist wants to shift gears. Uh, of course, we know, I mean, I get it, I understand uh, the reasoning behind it with the technology that you got, you have available with these transmissions now, these automatics or these dual clutch transmissions. They are so fast and so efficient. Um, there's no way a human being could ever uh, perform a shift in that fast like a dual clutch automatic can do. So, of course, that's the reasoning behind it, and I get that it all makes sense. They're trying to get the car into supercar uh, territory and performance. And, of course, all the supercars nowadays, over the past, uh, what, five, six, ten years maybe, uh, they have these dual-clutch transmissions that allow the car to shift in an instant, you know, again, in a matter of milliseconds, fractions of a second. Uh, so, of course, that's the that's the idea, that's the reasoning. Again, it makes sense. They're trying to maximize the performance and get the most out of the powertrain as possible to make it the best performing, fastest car as they can, and that will, of course, make everything uh, like ridiculously fast when it comes to, um, you know the zero to 60 time, which again is estimated to be in the mid three second range, the quarter mile, uh, less than 11 seconds. All of that is possible because of dual clutch transmissions and how fast they shift. Uh, so yeah, I get all that. But at the same time, again, being a purist, there's a certain, uh, what's, there's a certain joy in driving that you only get from clutching with your foot and banging gears with your right hand or even your left hand if you're driving a right hand drive car you know all depends on where the car what uh country or continent the, the vehicle was you know manufactured for so you know it could be your right hand you're banging gears with or your left hand uh but there's and there's also a certain level of uh, driver control that you do not have with an automatic transmission. Uh, you know, I guess as a purist, you're also if you're a purist, you're also somewhat of a control freak. Uh, and of course, now it has it has the paddle shifters, you know, and that's cool. The same paddle shifters that are kind of designed uh, along the lines of and look pretty similar to the paddle shifters that are in the Ford GT, the 2016 and, and newer Ford GTs. Uh, so all of that's cool and it uh, makes for, uh, you know, it makes for a very interesting and uh, actually, you know, it, there's, there's, some, there's a fun level to it as well. But again, uh, I don't believe it can replace the feeling and the control that you get from a manual. Now this uh, Tremec DCT 7 speed, it's a 7 speed just like the Ford GT uh, of course in a Mustang uh, it's, a, it's a transaxle so a transaxle so it was uh, designed and built by Tremec Tremec of course is the same uh, transmission manufacturer that did the six-speed manuals in the previous generation GT500s from 2012 and 13 and 14 or whatever the case may be. I believe there's actually uh, the same, well, they might not be exactly the same, but there were Tremec six-speed transmissions in the older GT500s as well from 07 and 08. Uh, so, Tremec, of course, we know Tremec makes a good transmission. That's no problem. Um, they also made the five-speed uh, the five-speed manual that was in 
the 2015 through 2017 Mustangs. Uh, of course, that was the Tremec TR3650. Uh, of course, you know, the 2018's got a new MT82 transmission, which was a six-speed manual. That one, of course, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the problems and things that, been have, that have been uh, going on with those. Uh, really a design flaw. The shift forks were, are basically just not strong enough and they break and people's cars are down and they don't even really have a whole lot of miles on them. But yeah, that again is, that's how I feel with there only being a, uh, you know, only being a automatic available for this car. It's, I'm really conflicted. It's, it's, it's kind of just not sitting well with me or sitting right with me within, within my spirit. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm holding on to hope uh, that eventually they will offer a manual transmission. Um, of course, when asked, because of course everyone is asking them about it, uh, all the executives, uh, and they're saying, uh, no, we're announcing the the seven speed automatic. That's what we have available. That's what we're gonna have. Now, me holding out hope, I'm saying in my mind, well, he didn't say that a manual isn't going to be available in the future. He's just saying the seven speed automatic is what is being announced now. So that again, in my mind, I'm holding on to that hope that, well, this is just for now. We could get a manual later. So again, I'm, I'm hoping and praying for that because again, for reasons that I just said, up here is you want to shift gears manually. You just want to do that. Uh, now, again, going back to looks, the um, transmission as far as uh, the gear selector is has that rotary uh, button type sh gear selector, selector, same one that is in the uh, Ford GT, the 2016 and newer Ford GTs. So, you know, that looks pretty cool. When I first saw it, of course, I, I'm thinking that looks pretty Chrysler-ish because you see those rotary style ones in the Chrysler 300s and the Durangos, the Ram trucks and um, all those vehicles. Uh, but then again, when you think about it, yeah, that is in the Ford GT. So the the gear selector, the paddle shifters, you know, they're all pretty much taking cues uh, or those components are taking cues from the Ford GT, of course. So uh, it, it it's nice looking. It just doesn't speak to my soul like a manual transmission would. But, you know, that's my take on it. Uh, I'm sure some of you uh, will agree. Others of you will disagree. Other, others will be fine with uh, just having an automatic only. Some of you are hoping and praying like me that we'll eventually get a manual. It's either that or, you know, do the hard work of converting it yourself after you buy the car. That's the thought that came to my mind. You know, if if I'm ever uh, in a financial position where I can afford to buy this car, I'll probably be able to afford to pay somebody to convert it over to a manual for me. And that is probably what I would do. And then I would probably uh, buy two of them because the DCT, of course, has its place. It has its purpose, of course. Um, you know, we were hoping, me and some of the other uh, people who, you know, people that you comment on videos on YouTube with, people, other people that make videos, you know, kind of hoping for, you know, two versions of the car with both options available, like, you know, automatic transmission available and then you could also get a manual as well you know automatic for the drag strip because of course it's going to be faster for drag strip but then if you're a track junkie or, or excuse me not a track junkie because 
the drag strip technically is a track too but you know a road course track junkie you would want the manual transmission because you have that additional control uh, you know again something about being able to heel toe brake and rev match uh, yourself again that's a feeling you only get with a manual and an automatic a dual clutch the the machine the transmission does that for you so but it's not the same you hear it happening and it sounds good but it's not the same as you doing it yourself another thing uh why i believe they're going just automatic right now is the times now uh as, you know if you i was having a i was having a discussion with one of my friends uh today and he was actually we were talking about this car and i was telling him how it's only going to have an automatic and he was talking about how somebody that he was talking to was had a uh per, you know a person in their car that was giving him a ride or something and the guy had to be probably you know under the age of 25 so he's probably a young dude and this guy had a car you know whatever he was driving it was a it was a manual transmission and the the, per, the guy that he was gonna ride the kid had like never seen a manual transmission before so it was like he was asking he was like yo what is that what are you doing and he was like what do you mean I'm shifting gears. This is a manual transmission. It's like I've never seen that before in my life. Which, of course, if you are over a certain age, you know, you remember when an automatic transmission was the, uh, you know, a, an automatic transmission was like the new thing that only only certain vehicles have. But you know, nowadays, pretty much all vehicles have them, and you know. I'm, on, I'm 33 years old, so uh, I'm not that old, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those generational things, I guess. And it's, it's just a sign of the times, really, as to how um, they would actually make this type of performance vehicle with a automatic only. Because, you know, back, back then, you would never think of a performance-oriented vehicle being automatic but of course dct is not your original just you know basic automatic it is a performance oriented automatic transmission that gets the most efficiency and power out of the shifting process but again a sign of the times i guess i will be considered a dinosaur uh soon <laughs> because i want to shift but yeah, again, let me know how you feel about that. Um, the fact that there's only a automatic going to be available. Will you would you buy this car? Does it mean that much to you? Are you one of the people who uh, don't really care or not so much attached to manuals? Or are you one of those of us who just won't feel right without a manual? <laughs> Uh, you know, put it in the comments, talk about it, debate, even argue. <laughs> hey, the more the merrier. It's a discussion. And, you know, that's what we're here to talk about these types of things. But I think I'm going to wrap up this video. I've gone on for long enough now. So thanks again for watching. If you stuck around this long, uh, please like subscribe comment and share this has been another episode of for the love of rise and i'll see y'all on the next video that's as much power as our actual brand new nascar mustang race cars but this one is street legal